Hello everyone, welcome to Ketu Mahadasha Antadashas. On this video, I'm analyzing the nine sub periods you will go through when you experience Ketu Mahadasha. I'm also going to show you how to judge this Mahadasha Antadashas in your own chart. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. Let's begin. Ketu Mahadasha is seven years in length. It's fast moving. And the Antadashas, also known as Bukti periods, are short and very intense. To get more information of the meaning of Ketu Mahadasha and all the effects you will experience, check the link below. I have a video on my channel where I also have remedies. The effects of the Antadasha periods in K2 will be read from the connection between K2 and that Subdasha Lord. But in addition, it's very important that you check the end of this video so that you understand how to read that Subdasha Lord as he is placed from K2. Because the good or bad effects of that Antadasha, whichever they are, can only be read by looking at your own natal placements. So let's begin. K2, K2 period lasts for four months and 27 days. I liken it to a sort of sleepwalking effect. K2, K2 is obviously a crossover period from the last Mahadasha Mercury. So there's always instability. But what I definitely seen is how the new comes into your life. It looks like it is the new. You go somewhere new, it makes a big impression on you. You meet new types of people in this short period, they make a big impression on you, but they're not new. Nothing that comes into your life in this four months, 27 days is new. It's directly related to your past karmas. But what you have to recognize is that, as I've explained on my video, K2 Mahadasha, once again, I can't emphasize how you need to see that so you know what K2 is about. I don't want to go into that too much here. I'm talking about the Antadashas. K2, K2 will emphasize this lack of control. K2 has got hold of you now. He wants to show you who you were, what you did. He wants to show you how to release yourself from some of these difficult karmas. But it won't be really obvious now. In fact, because there is so much shifting, these are very short buktis, four months, very short. Everything is short and sharp, K2 Mahadasha. So you're going to definitely feel, as I say, something new in your life, some new feeling of who you are. You want to transform into something new. You have this feeling that you must change, that something has to give in your life, but you're just not sure how you should do it. But no sooner have you almost adjusted to the odd, strange, unworldly factors of K2K2, where everything is completely tumbling around you and unstable, the new enter K2 Venus, the longest period in K2 Mahadasha, one year and two months only though. So you are now going to take action to transform yourself socially. I've seen this. People start new social circle interaction. A special new friend or even relationship can come for some people. But it's K2. Are these people on your wavelength? Are they just coming from your past to teach you lessons? Sometimes that can be seen. Men should take caution in this time as well. How you relate to the woman in your life needs to change. There is a need for less selfishness sometimes because K2 Venus makes you want to enjoy. You see, K2 Venus is all about dissatisfaction. So men and women, male and female, relationships, you're looking at them through a whole new glass. Sometimes you leave the past behind. Sometimes you have to separate, get divorced. But whatever it is, you are going to change your current relationship in some way because you are dissatisfied with the way it is. In fact, K2 Venus has a lot to do with artistic sense, fashion, etc. And people become dissatisfied with their own appearance also. K2 Venus gives a completely new look. I've seen people transform themselves from one way of dressing, appearing to a completely different factor. They look like a different person even. Finally, because Venus has to do with financial factors in our life, K2 Venus can have these go completely out of control if there is a bad relationship between K2 and Venus in your chart. There can be excessive expenditure, wastefulness, just bad investments and so on. Take great care with your finances during this time. But if there is good aspect, then there can be new opportunities for extra income sometimes also. 
Next, we come to K2 Sun. Four months, six days. Circle these dates in your diary because they're going to be challenging. This is perhaps one of the most challenging periods. K2 and the Sun are definitely not harmonious together. I've seen father difficulties, great difficulty with authority. I mean, this is not the time to approach the boss and demand anything. Slow it down. Your ego is very strong. But let me tell you, K2 Sun will bring your ego down. K2 Sun can lead to humiliation if you push forward. Try to stay humble. It's going to be hard. What you are wanting to do is to push forward against all obstacles in your life. You feel like you are not being noticed in this time period and you are balking against that pushing through be careful it's a definite trap finally it's very important to realize that sun has so much to do with your health and your vitality k2 almost drains it out of you in this intense period do take care because stress levels can rock it due to conflict and animosity be very careful particularly if you are older in this time period to take some time for yourself. There's certainly no let up in K2 Mahadasha. After the intensity and conflict of K2 Sun comes K2 Moon, seven months. And it's an emotional roller coaster, is the only word I can say. Some people, depending on the aspect of the moon to K2, get some real emotional rejection. It's very hard. You really need to take refuge of close friends, people that are there for you, because on some level you can feel that you are not accepted who you are. Difficulties with mother, domestic issues, everything to do with feeling settled and secure in life is coming unstuck in this seven month period. If you are under 48 years of age, particularly if that's when K2 matures, or you are teenager, 20s, this can be a very disturbing time. You get into wrong association. You are led into difficult social factors that are definitely unhealthy and not good for you. Your mind is definitely not clear. Moon is the mind and K2 will cloud the mind. But the good thing is, I want to bring in some of the good factor now for K2, K2 can actually illuminate your mind with spiritual knowledge at this time. You can gain knowledge of occult subjects, knowledge of deep intuitive factors that you didn't know. So the whole of K2 Mahadasha, of course, is very good, as I've explained on my video, for everything to do with occult study. K2 Moon might be a time when you get great insight in this way. Even psychic ability can come to the fore during this rather turbulent, emotional few months. But you're back on your feet again in K2 Mars. Mars is so akin to K2. Mars is almost a very similar energy to K2 outward, whereas K2 is inward aggression. So all of a sudden you're on your feet. You've got your weapons. You're fighting. But who are you fighting? That is the question to ask yourself, everyone, in this four months, 27 days. Are you fighting a righteous war as it were or are you just fighting because you need to force your way through so as i say you must check your chart in this regard placement of mars and k2 because there can be hazard here you can challenge authority challenge friends challenge yourself in a way that just absolutely brings you unstuck so watch for unneeded aggression unneeded force in these four months but K2 Mars can actually cut from your life unwanted factors. You may leave a job. You may leave friendships, relationships in this short period. You're very much focused on what you need to do for yourself. You're not afraid in K2 Mars. There is a complete lack of fear of any consequences. You do what you have to do. This is why accidents can happen. Hazards are there. Take care of your health. I've seen fevers and all sorts sorts of temperature rises happen. So health-wise, it's a tricky period for sure. 
Next, we come to the karmic axis, K2 Rahu. One year and 18 days when your life will turn on a wheel. Do not be afraid of it. People are very afraid of Rahu, K2, K2 Rahu. Actually, K2 Rahu is simply where something definitely that is a past life connection comes back to you but it's come back to set you on the new Rahu path. That sounds a bit confusing, let me show you. You are being separated from past factors at this time so that a new identity, a new you can emerge. It's very helpful at this turbulent time, everyone, to understand the axis in your chart. So checking out the K2 Rahu houses, once again, I will link the playlist below. In your chart, in your D1 chart, that K2 placement is what you definitely have to leave behind. So that area of your life is going to be turbulent now. Let's say you've got K2 in your fourth house. Your home life is very turbulent. Things have to change. If it's in your fifth house, difficulties with children, education will definitely happen now. So please check out that K2 Rahu natal placement. You see, Rahu is taking you to the new karma that you have to fulfill in this lifetime. Important for everybody to watch health factors in K2 Rahu. Unexpected factors come up just out of the blue, but really what they're coming from is the stress level in your body, which is so high. Particularly when K2 is in, say, a sign like Taurus and Cancer, where you're clinging on to the past so strongly that Rahu's influence is disturbing you, and the churning of this axis is just really turning you into a little bit of a fearful state. So this factor of fear will affect health. Best remedy is, of course, check the video. I have about K2 remedies, by the way, but the best remedy is always meditation, getting your mind free from all material factors, even for just five minutes a day. This is so helpful in the whole of K2 Mahadasha, but particularly in the churning period of K2 Rahu. But the good news is that after the turbulence of K2 Rahu comes K2 Jupiter. 11 months and six days, virtually one year, when everything calms down for most people. But again, you check the position of K2 Jupiter in your chart. One thing for sure, even under affliction, K2 Jupiter will open some doors for you, give you some relief. You see, Jupiter is dharmic and K2 is a renunciate, so there is something in common here. Jupiter will give you a true inner knowing at this time, a true belief, a true faith. So you calm down a little bit. You lose that fighting, that, that pushing through, that turbulence of K2 Rahu. So K2 Jupiter can actually open doors for you at this time that are very welcome. New income can come into your life, new job opportunity. You can actually definitely go up the ladder even in your job. Sometimes it seems unbelievable how the doors that were shut to you just open again in K2 Jupiter. The question is about these factors and, and by the way, in education as well. K2 Jupiter is very good for attainment in education. But the question is... Are you on the right course? Are you in the right job? Even though these opportunities come to you, K2 Jupiter, are they for you long term is always the question you have to ask yourself. And even relationships. Again, Jupiter is the husband in woman chart. Sometimes K2 Jupiter, I've definitely seen, can bring new relationship in women's life, even men's life also. But it particularly relates to female chart. Then you know, you've got to look at this and think, will this relationship last beyond this 11 months? Definitely. It may do. It may be the greatest soulmate of your life because K2 brings that which was yours before back to you. But you've got to give it the test of the next Bukti period. K2 Saturn period is one year, one month, and nine days. So after some certainty and some hopefulness comes Shani to show you the reality of any situation. So anything which you started K2 Jupiter must pass the test of K2 Shani to survive because K2 Saturn is reality. K2 Saturn will show you the harsh reality of everything, but it's not too scary because K2 Saturn have a certain similarity in a way. They are both 
reclusive. They are both austere, definitely. So you become quite disciplined in this time. I've seen people not afraid to start a new diet, start new exercise. People get a real grip on their life and become very determined to sort out anything about things which are not together in their life. But if there is ill aspect between K2 and Saturn in your chart, K2 and Saturn period can be a real worry time when you just don't know what to do next. You're really stuck. You just don't know what your next move could be. It can be a lonely time, a bit of an isolating time as well. You are thrown back on yourself at this time. You may need to let go of things because they've just not worked out, although you would have liked them to. So it's a certain reality check and it's a quite austere time. Make the most of it though, because you can do great study in this period. Students can do very well from hard work and research, most certainly. Finally, you enter the 11 month, 27 days of K2 Mercury Dasha Chidra. When one door is closing in your life, K2, and the other door, Venus, is just ahead, but you've not quite got to it yet, Venus Mahadasha. So Mercury gets you in the mood for change, for social life, for friendship, for interaction, it lightens the mood of K2, but K2 is still in control. I've seen a special new friendship come into your life, starting a new educational course, traveling a lot, undergoing change in pursuit in life, generally just trying out some new skills, etc. But because it's K2, all of these new interests have a time limit. You may find a new friend and then they do not continue with you in, into uh, Venus Mahadasha. You may start a course of education, but it just doesn't continue into Venus, so on. Sometimes it will, but something will have to be changed about it for it to really continue on into Venus, Venus. So what do you do with yourself, K2 Mercury, for this year? Study. Continue on with your occult study. Continue on with travel. It's a great time for movement in your life, experiencing new vistas, etc. Stay light and stay open to the new. But trying to ground anything, trying to keep anything in your life at this time is really tricky. But don't be fearful that K2 Mercury will take away things that are already in your life before you start this period. It's just that the new interesting things that come into your life and people at this time are just very often here for today, not for tomorrow. But enjoy them because K2 Mercury gives interest, intellectual insight, and actually it helps you to lighten up ready for the next Mahadasha. Next, I will show you how to judge the Bukhtis in your own chart. By the position of your K2, you can judge how these Mahadasha Bukhtis will go for you by their placement from K2. You can also, by the way, look in your D9, D10, in fact, every Varga chart and read in exactly the same way. The easiest way is to see your chart from the position of K2 by drawing up a very simple new chart and putting K2 in the first house. So if you've got K2 in, let's say, Gemini, you put K2 Gemini first house and put in all the other planets as they are in your chart from K2. You can also do this for your D9, D10, every Varga chart. Don't forget, when you are counting houses from K2, K2 is the first house that you have to count. So let's say you've got Aries K2 and you have Mars in Cancer. So it's one, two, three, four houses that you have to count from that Aries K2 position. Now let's look at how we can differentiate between the house placements of the Bukti Lord from K2. The favorable Bukti Lord positions from K2, as they are for many planets, are when the Lord is placed four houses from K2, five houses from K2, nine from K2, and ten from K2. This allows the full energy to manifest in a more easily controllable way in your life, even though, as I've explained to you, K2 Mahadasha has a lot of factors which will always be outside of your control.
Where you find the most challenging factors, though, are when the Bukti Lord is placed in the sixth house from K2, seventh house from K2, eighth and 12th house positions from K2. Particularly when you have the 7th house position from K2, it's very challenging because obviously everybody is going to have K2 Rahu here and I've explained to you how turbulent that can be. But when you have other planets with Rahu, then you are definitely going to find some disturbances in that sub-period. Mixed results can be found when you have planets in the same house as K2. Two houses from K2, three houses and 11 houses from K2. Much will depend on the planet itself and the sign they are in. If it's in a strong sign, you will get the best factors. If it's in a weak sign for that planet, you will get the most challenging factors. And any planet which is in the same sign as K2 has extremely strong karmas. And you must definitely check out your personal karmas with that planet. Again, check the playlist on my channel of planetary karmas to see what possibilities you might have to face there because K2 is your past and he is bringing up past life karmas to be met again most certainly. Up on your screen right now, K2 Mark Hadasha with all remedies also. Don't forget, if you're new to my channel, to sub below. Goodbye for now and God bless you all.